Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 level design essential series. In today's video we are going to be taking a look at how we can use sounds within our levels that we are designing. Now what I do want to mention is that we are going to be focusing on using sounds that are within the engine rather than making sounds as making sounds is not something you can do with Unreal Engine and has to be done in a third party software package. As we're putting these sounds into our scene, we're also going to be taking a look at ways we can adjust the settings to give them a more realistic feel and how we can also use them to complement our level as well. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into it and show you how you can use a sound. So a sound is an asset just like any other and as such, you are going to be able to find it within the content browser. Now if you've imported any sounds already, they're going to be wherever you've put them, however as part of the starter content, there is a audio folder and within here you've got a whole bunch of pre-made sounds that we can use within our level. So when you get into here, you will notice there is two different types of sounds. You've got a sound wave and a sound cue. And both of these can be taken and placed into your level. However, they have sort of a slightly different job between the two of them. So I'm going to try and break this down in a way that will make it nice and easy for you guys to understand so that you can sort of better understand their use and place them in your level accordingly. So first things first, you have got the sound wave, which is the sound with the purple line underneath it. And the sound wave is essentially the raw sound information that has been imported into Unreal Engine. Now, in addition to that, you've also got a sound cue, and these are slightly different. A sound cue uses the raw sound files but it also has a bunch of effects applied to it and you essentially get this blueprint style interface where you can modify uh, how that sound cue is going to be played. So for me, for example, I've just opened up this explosion cue. Within here, it's got two pieces of sound information and it's playing one at random. And then it's also modulating it as well so it plays differently every time and that's something you can do with a sound cue. It gives you that freedom to play around with the effect a little bit in this interface, which is something that you can't do with a normal sound wave. So if you want to have that creative freedom and change things up with your sound a little bit, then just convert it into a sound cue and then you can place it into your level. Now, if you guys want a little bit more detail on some of the different nodes and so on within the sound editor, then I might even do a little mini series on that, but just let me know if that's something you're interested in. Um, for now, what I'm going to do is not cover this too much and focus on how you can get those sounds in the level and then how you can adjust some of those settings as well to make them come out right. So the sound that I'm going to work with for now is going to be one for the fire. So I've got this fire particle system within my scene here. What I'm going to do is just click drag and drop to place my sound cue for that fire within our scene. Now notice when you put this in here, you've got your sound icon and then you've got a dome and then you've got an outer dome as well. And what these domes are essentially doing is telling you sort of where the sound is going to be the loudest and at what point you're going to stop hearing it as well. So essentially, if you're within this inner circle here, you are going to be hearing the sound at the maximum volume. Between the outside of this inner circle and the outside circle over here, that is where it's going to start to fade off. So essentially it's going to be getting quieter and quieter and quieter as you walk away until the point where you can no longer hear it. The point where you can no longer hear it is essentially at the edge of this outer circle. So essentially, if you get past this tree here, you'll no longer be able to hear it. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So just press play. And right now, I'm outside of that circle. I can't hear anything. And then, as I get closer and closer, you can start to hear the fire sound effect. And once you get to that inner circle, it's going to be really loud and you can hear it the way that it should be. Now, 
if you want your sound effect to be something that can be heard sort of further than that basic distance, then that's something that you need to change. And that's going to be something that you need to change within the details panel for that specific sound. So what I'm going to do is select that sound and just take a moment to focus on going through some of the important settings that you're going to have in here. And that includes the attenuation. And attenuation is essentially just the fading of the sound over the distance. So select your sound effect and we're going to go through the main settings. First things first, you've got the sound which is at the top, which is our fire cue. Don't worry about the rest of these. Volume multiplier is pretty straightforward, so that is going to be how loud your sound is going to be. So if you feel it's not loud enough, just turn that up. You've also got your pitch, if that's something you want to adjust there as well. But then, if you want your attenuation, which is the fading of the sound over time. So if you want it to sort of extend out a little bit, what you can do with this is go to your attenuation, override it, and then with your attenuation distance in here, you can actually change the inner radius and the fall off radius. The inner radius is the inner circle, and then the fall off distance is your outer circle. So in a radius, you can make this bigger or smaller just by changing this number. Or you can also change the fall off distance by just changing that number. You can manually type it in or you can just use the arrows to slide this and you can see that radius is moving along with it. So if you're happy with that, then you are good to go. You've also got a bunch of other settings, but I don't want to go into too much detail into those for now. The main one is that you understand attenuation, you know how to change your volume, your pitch, and the sound effect as well. So hopefully by now what you should have is a good understanding of how you can start to introduce sounds into your scene, and also sort of a basic understanding of attenuation and how you should use it within your level to make it realistic. But if you have a scene with sounds, it's going to be a lot more lifelike, whereas at the moment it's really dead. So if I was to go ahead and put these st um, starter birds into these trees here, press play, I can hear the trees, I've got the fire over here, and it's really, really bringing our game to life. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode. Once again, guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.